Fortunately, almost every position that I've won has always been percussion assistant timpani. The percussion aspect has been different in every orchestra. In Honolulu, I was a mallet player. Uh, in Hong Kong, um, I was kind of a cymbal, bass drum, toy guy, timpanist, and then I became the timpanist over there. And here, it was really snare drum, timpani, um, which, which I liked because they're my favorite instruments. It's what I felt I could do best at. And um, I, I had that position for 10 years, actually, before I moved over to the timpani position. I get a lot of sas satisfaction out of both jobs. Um, snare drum, um, if, you, if you do it right, you can really sort of shine and be a star. You know, if you're playing, you know, you have a, a way of playing really soft or and controlled, and the orchestra loves it when they have a strong snare drummer. And uh, with timpani, um, it's a whole, it's a much different musical satisfaction. Um, and I don't want to say one is better than the other, but I, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I can't imagine n not playing timpani at this point because I really feel like I'm, I'm more part of controlling the shape of a piece. I think the timpani position is so important in the orchestra that it can really guide the whole emotion. It can guide sort of the direction and it's it's part conductor, part you know musician. I think because it's important to know really what's going on in the whole orchestra. And besides the concert master, I think between those two players, if you've got a strong timpanist and a strong concert master, uh, you have a good chance of the orchestra really um, uh, being great. As the timpanist, um, I, I you know I went through a huge sort of change in my development, just kind of watching what, you know, the guy who had been here <laughs> was doing, which was, you know, Vic Firth, who had been here a long time. And he really had his own way of doing everything. And it was something that I'd never seen before. You know, the really great players really have their own niche in the instrument. And so I was fascinated with Vic on the simplicity of it. But everything was perfect. It was just as if that was, it was meant to be played that way. And he could play a quarter note, and it was just the way he placed it, or just the color that he did, really uh, opened my eyes to a whole sort of new world of timpani. Um, he was so darn effortless at, at, at you know, what he did. He really couldn't explain to things, and he didn't try to. He just played, and he, you know, he, was, he was a great colleague. But, um, he was just one of those natural musicians that could put nuances and, and without thinking about it, it just happened. So I, I uh, really tried to pay attention to what that aspect was because I liked it. I wanted part of that in my playing and we, we're completely different players um, and I, I don't think this orchestra was looking for someone to you know, sound just like Vic Firth. Um, but it definitely helped my development. I have to say, one thing that I've noticed is that you're always compared to your predecessor. Um, and if you follow someone who is iconic and sort of a legend in their position, which Vic definitely was, Saul was, Cloyd Duff, all those guys, um, it's, it's not easy to follow that. It's much easier to follow someone who's, you know, a little bit more of a normal person. <laughs> so. Um, it was, it was not easy following Vic. I mean, I, I, I did have a clean audition. I won it outright, which was nice. There was nobody else who had to, I had to play with in the orchestra. They hired me right out of the curtain, which was good. Um, but you know, the, this, people did have a expectation of what they thought timpani was in this orchestra. And I'm a firm believer that you know, I'm not going to try to copy someone. I have my own musical beliefs, but um, I found that you know I did have to really see things from a lot of different viewpoints and not think of things being my way or the highway. I wanted to be open uh, to new ideas because I think if you're not that way, um, you're 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 going to get stuck musically. You always have to sort of 
know who to listen to and know what you can change in your playing. And I, I think I kept that open-mindedness um, throughout my whole sort of probation process and became a different player even through, you know, from when I won till this point. Um, and, and I think, you know, a good thing for all musicians uh, to keep in mind is that if, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. That is to say, if you're staying, trying to stay the same, you're definitely not getting better. You're getting worse. You always have to try to achieve something a little bit better um, because um, you're, you're going to get flat as a player. So I think that's a good thing to keep in mind with, um, as, with your development. You know, I certainly don't feel like I'm at the end of my road. I haven't made it. Um, there's a lot more to accomplish, and I think any great musician has to be thinking that way.